All right. My microphone is coming through super hot. Not sure what I did there. Mm. Okay, I think that works. How about you? You want to sing us a sing us a song or something to give us give us a little uh, sound check or what? Maybe some uh, some Chaucer or what? Well, uh, Chaucer Chaucer is an author, not a uh, not a composer. I mean, so you can you really work. you can take his literary works and convert them into songs if you have the right attitude. And it sounds like you don't, so we can just move on. I think that that would be best. <laughs> I don't need that defeatist attitude in here. I don't need that overachieving attitude in here. Whoa, this is this is literally a stream about us trying to achieve something. And you're telling me to give up? But we're not trying to overachieve. We're trying to achieve the right amount. That's technically true, since uh, if I wanted to overachieve, I wouldn't have taken a two-month break of making shorts. So you're not wrong. Or lost the episode that we did last time that I showed up sick for. To be fair, you sounded like absolute dog shit. That is fair, but I was here. Like, I don't know that it was worth saving to begin with. But, yeah, my bad. I did, I did lose it. I guess we will never know. Yeah, that yeah, that good. that could have been our breakthrough. That could have been our breakthrough episode. It could have been. It could have I been. We'll never know. He healthy and sick man stream about Wheel of Time could have been our uh, could have been our breakthrough episode. Could have been a kink that uh, nobody knew that they had. We're sleeping on giving the people what they want. <laughs> I've got to adjust my uh, my microphone some more. It is still I don't know what I did different. Like I have literally changed none of my settings, and now everything's going bananas. It's so weird. I don't understand. Um, can you still can you still hear me? I turned myself down quite a bit. Oh, it's the same for me. I'm in Discord. Oh yeah, you're right. Huh. Okay. Well, uh, man, I don't think that's true. I think if I turn myself down enough here. You wouldn't be able to hear me. Is that not true? Let me know it's the same level. Wow. Well, then I don't understand how I'm controlling this at all. Apparently, all the effort I put into controlling all this means absolutely nothing. I'm very upset right now. <laughs> okay. Well, anyways, um, uh, we did we did talk about quite a bit of this when you were sick. Uh, but if we want to revisit any of this, or or uh, just pick up where we left off, is I'm fine with either one. I think we could. Uh... We could probably just pick up where we left off. I don't really think there was anything too juicy, too exciting. I think we uh, pretty much just covered the low-hanging fruit from the episode. Yeah, I think we talked about the slides about, like, Egwene. Is that, does that sound about right? The Egwene and, uh, and Nynaeve with the Aes Sedai. Yeah. I'm pretty sure that's what we talked about. Yeah, talked about her and Rena. 
Yeah. Yeah, which I mean that that's intense. You know, definitely. I feel like is a big catalyst for uh, an emotional draw for this season. Um. Yeah, really, really intense. But there's like there's only so much. You know, we could really break that down. Like, yeah, she's she's in the midst of being tortured. You know. Yeah, that's ba- I mean, that's basically the summary. Rena bad, Egwene mad. There you go. Look at you. You're composing already. I am. That's going to be my first short for this whole thing. I'm feeling I'm feeling it. I'm feeling it come back to me. It's like riding a bike. Um So, I've got Landfear's little mini arc at the front of this thing since it's kind of like to the side of the rest of the episode like I don't I don't really know what the what the value is supposed to be um, in showing all this but I, I kind of wanted to get your take on it because you and I kind of discussed off stream uh, what's going on with uh, Leandrin and you know it's just they, they, I know they have to fill in the episodes, and I was just trying to, I was trying to come up in my head like with a reason why they would show this. Like, is this important to the show overall? Um, uh, you're, you're gonna have to refresh my memory. Um, okay, well, so exactly what is it that you're looking for in this? So Lanfear shows up at Leandrin's like son's house and Leandrin lashes out and that's what this slide is is her trying to um trying to lash out at Lanfear and Lanfear Lanfear's looking pretty bored here uh grabs Leandrin's weave and is basically like you're wasting your time um trying to attack me and then uh calmly threatens to flay her alive and then Leandrin proceeds to kill, uh, I mean, Lanfear proceeds to kill Leandrin's son. To, gotcha. yeah. like, allegedly free Leandrin from her greater calling. It, that That's kind of where I was going. I was trying to figure out why this. And then... Yeah, uh, it's confusing. Because I feel like, <clears throat> I feel like, the whole reason, at least the way that the show is portraying Leandrin's allegiance to the dark side, it is to keep her son alive. And in that, you kill her son off, you're really cutting her tie, at least the tie that the show built, to the dark one. I can see how they see it as they're, they're cutting off her dead weight. Her son's holding her back. Uh, because, like, things are now in motion where basically soldiers need to be ready to do their job uh, on both sides. And I feel like Leandrin is one that's half foot in, half foot out because she's holding on to her son, wanting to be close to him, having to tend to him and take care of him. And the Dark Lord just can't have that. That's, that's, too much of a distraction in the upcoming events for the events to come up shortly um, that he needs her attention for but what I don't understand is if I'm Leandrin and I <clears throat> basically gave you my fealty in return that you would keep my son alive if you were to kill him or somebody on your side was to kill him uh, we're done I'm not I'm not messing with y'all anymore. So I'm it w- it was really confusing for me. Right. That's That's basically what I was getting at is she they they set up this premise or the prem- the premise is, is that she joined the uh the dark friends uh, I guess on on a promise that they could save her son somehow. Mm-hmm. Uh, I guess maybe the 
the power to heal him or the you know something they promised her something and that's why she swore the oaths and now they've taken away the one like the one draw or one lip lever that they had over her which is you know we'll keep your son alive and Lanfear walks in and kills him takes all that away and then basically tells her you swore your oaths too bad so sad now get to work much, I guess, yeah, and I mean, Leandrin, she's broken her oaths as a Asadai, so I mean, like, yeah, she just kind of got screwed because her bed's made. Like, even if I guess, even if she did want to not pledge her loyalty to him anymore, I don't understand all the mechanics, but like you said, she's already pledged the oaths to the Dark One. And she's already went back and broken her oaths to her sisterhood. So there is no going back for her. And she's already two feet in on the dark side. So what choice does she really have? Right. Well. I'm I'm assuming and I I don't I don't remember, but I'm pretty sure she's still alive at the end of the season. Is that right? Do you know off the top uh, of your head? Yeah, 100% she was alive, so uh, great to know that her death is coming. Um, well, my, my thought was that this scene may be like a triggering point for her in season three to really turn up the, really turn up the evil. Now she's got nothing that anybody can hold against her. Uh, you know, Lanfear is basically... This is Leandrin's uh, youngling moment for, you know, when Anakin kills all the younglings in Star Wars. Now he's really evil. Kills his wife. Becomes Darth Vader. This is Leandrin's Darth Vader moment. She's got nothing left to, to keep her in line. So that's no, but to me that would work backwards. Like it wouldn't draw her closer to the dark, it would push her further away. But I don't know. Hmm. Doesn't this this is a situation that just doesn't quite make a ton of sense to me. So not that not that we condone um hurting ourselves in any way, but do you think she would you think something she would try is try to get out of it next season? Like off herself somehow well like I said I don't know how the mechanics of these oaths work because I thought that she took oaths as a Asadai mm -hmm. but now she's also making oaths to the dark side so like right. is it, are they all like the oath rod are they all like have their own little I don't I don't know uh, I'm not that deep in it yet so right. uh I wouldn't know she'd have to kill herself to get out of the oath, or I don't know if she's just pledging her word, but she can always turn on her word. Because obviously she brought Nynaeve and Egwene um, to the other dark friends, but she let Nynaeve go. Right. You know, so if she's magically compelled to do something, then how did she, mag like, she use magic to do harm against the intentions of her side that's a good point i mean uh you and i have briefly talked about how loose the Aes Sedai oaths are i mean the Aes Sedai feel like snakes anytime they open their mouths just because of how well they can wiggle out of what they say so maybe maybe if the even if the dark whatever you want to call them um, the dark friends that can use the one power even if they had oaths there will probably be relatively loose like the Aes Sedai ones I would think I mean I I don't really want to try and spoil anything I'm just kind of speculating like from the point of view of this discussion and stuff we know from the show uh, but 
so my my prediction my personal prediction is in season three she's gonna go ham she's she's gonna oh yeah yeah i mean they've spent a lot of time with leandrin as a character all the way from pretty much day one you know she has been right. a uh heavily invested character in the show she's gonna have to have it would make sense for her to have a on fire season now that all the cards are put on the table I am having some sort of issue with my sound I don't think we need to stop or anything but I'm highly irritated with not being able to control my microphone uh, give me like Two seconds, I guess. Cause, uh, well, here, look. Uh, tell tell me if you can if you can still hear me when I mute myself. Like, did I cut out at all? Mm -hmm. See, my my mute my mute button doesn't work. Some something is um, something is something is interfering with my ability to mute mute myself. And, and something got affected whenever you unplugged it. It's either that or my software is not set up right for some reason. I mean, I'm just going to have to roll with it, you know, try not to, I guess, try not to make any stupid noises. Um, but give me just a second. Like, I've got to turn my AC on. I'm turning into a. I like cooking my face is my face is flushed. Okay. Anyway, that's a troubleshooting problem for later. Um So yeah, bottom line, Leandrin's probably going to go absolutely ham pretty in season 3. She's going to be one evil one evil lady. Um What is this picture? This uh two dark friends. No, not loyal. <laughs> I don't know. He's been acting a bit sussy. Oh, I, I put I put this in this order because it's only two slides. Uh, what in the world? Ugh. Uh, yeah, I think we... I want to say we talked about this already. Talked about him and the trees growing. Yep. Yeah, because I I'm pretty sure I went on a rant about uh, about loyal tree singing. Um. Mm -hmm. And then I've got all these rand slides. So. Rand or land fear. <laughs> uh, it's mostly land fear, yeah. I don't. I think this is 
this is really where we left off, I think. Yeah, talking talking about Leandro reminded me of that really great uh, kind of epiphany moment that felt like we both had with Nynaeve in the last episode that uh, got got deleted. Um, when she... It was at the moment when that other Asadai got taken. Mm -hmm. And uh, we were talking about we both think that Nynaeve had a a moment of clarity, of understanding of the the sisterhood, the Aes Sedai, and what that means to her. Because like we talked about, I'm trying to remember what I said last time, but Nynaeve's basically always, so far to this point, only really had one foot in the White Tower. You know, but because of her exceptional ability with the one power, she has been treated with, you know, the utmost importance and special training and privileges and being pushed to succeed in the tower. And all the while, she's only ever kept one foot there. And I feel like, you know, we talked about, you know, she's been accepted or, or she isn't accepted. Um, but her true loyalty lies to her friends, the two rivers folk, not the tower, not the sisterhood. I don't think that it really comes across that she feels completely tied to that the way that the rest of the Asadai do. And I feel like when she went to, um, what is it, Fal Falda? Uh, Falm. Falm. And she was in that position and she got the, she understood uh, firsthand what it looked like for the Aes Sedai to be persecuted and for them to not be in a position of authority. Uh, she kind of got a different perspective of what the world looks like when the White Tower isn't in control and how scary it can be for people like her, uh, which I think helped open up her, her perspective of the White Tower and where she comes from. Uh, meanwhile, it also, she saw that this girl that she had no ties to didn't, well, she does, she is tied to her, but really doesn't know this girl, has taken her in, put her life on the line to help her get her friend back, to get Egwene back, and is also, because of Nynaeve who messed up, going to sacrifice her life so that Nynaeve can continue her mission. And is trusting Nynaeve at the same time to fulfill her mission. And I think that that was the first time that we saw Nynaeve really accept the sisterhood for the first time, at least for me, that that's what I saw. Right. No, I think, I think that's, I would, I would agree. Cause up to this point, she's been not only skeptical, but downright hostile towards the, in her mind, the alleged sisterhood. Like she didn't really believe in it. She didn't want to believe in it. All she, all she knew was that if she didn't do it, it wouldn't get done, I guess. Yeah. And I feel like a big part of the reason she was there was for Egwene. Cause she knew that this was what Egwene wanted. Right. Um, But we don't we don't have to go back into that. I just remember that uh, I felt like that that was a good point that we had figured out in the last episode. No, it was. It it really was. Like I uh, that was one of the things that I'm a little upset at myself for not grabbing that that stream because that was a good that part was a good conversation. Um, so I'm glad I'm glad we kind of touched on it. You're looking real curious at your computer. Dude, it's 
driving me up the wall. Uh, and I keep clicking away and losing my spot in the slideshow. So, put the blinders on. I'll unplug my monitors if I have to. <laughs> um, but, did you bring that up? Because that's what we talked about last time. Because when I pulled this slide up, you immediately started talking about Nynaeve. Were they related somehow? Or No, so just us talking about Leandrin made uh, me think of us talking about Nynaeve. And I wanted to wait until you finished your point about the last slide before I brought it up. Oh. And I wanted to bring it up before we moved into something new. Okay, yeah. I mean, it, it is a good point. I, I thought that that episode really did a, a good job for... Nynaeve especially. Um, Nynaeve and Egwene both. I mean, you know, we we spent some time breaking down, you know, Egwene's torture, and I don't really want to hash all that back out, but uh, there was, you know, I felt like the show did a very good job on, on both girls Yeah. this episode. Don't forget, Rena bad, Egwene mad. <laughs> I'm gonna put that on. Which she's uh the the character from uh that plays Rena is in Fallout. I heard that. Um yeah. I heard that. I haven't watched it yet. I'm not really good at watching shows. Yeah. Although I do like the Fallout series. Never played the game. No. I mean I played it, but I never like got through the story. I just like I don't know, I played maybe a total of an hour and a half at like friend's house growing up the only fallout i've played is the um the fallout mobile game where it's just like oh. you're just building a base that's it mm -hmm. um so i know nothing about fallout other than that that's all my experience with it same i absolutely know nothing about fallout so that'd be a that'd be a great show for us to talk about, since we know nothing. Just talk about if we like it or not. So that's what I like to do. Yep, that one's on uh, Prime, isn't it? Yeah. Hmm. I may try to check it out. I'm I'm pretty busy right now. I uh. More than I thought I would be at this point in the year, but that's okay. Just manage my time a little better. You got uh, you got Shogun on the roster. You got a. Uh, I was talking about three work. body problem potentially. Oh yeah, yeah. I wrote that down. I think I left it on a sticky note at work. Um. Thank you for reminding me. I'll pull it up while I'm here at the Casa. Yeah, blinders. Oh, yeah. Getting distracted. Uh, all right. Well, Rand falls asleep and then wakes up here to see uh, Mommy Lanfear. Oh, lordy does he. And uh, she is dressed up something special. I don't... Um, this must be high fashion from the Age of Legends. There's no other explanation for it. Maybe that was uh, Louis Theron's kink. I mean, Maybe he liked uh, his women dressed in leather. Maybe so. Maybe so, but... Um, and uh, my note, my note for this particular slide is uh, whoever whoever wrote this scene is a Patrick Rothfuss fan, because uh, there's a scene in the book The Name of the Wind where the somebody is tied to literally tied to an iron wheel and and thrown into a pit. So seeing a big giant iron wheel like this is uh, whoever wrote this scene is. 
has read The Name of the Wind or it's just a very strange coincidence. Um, but anyways, uh, we're, I think Rand is aware that he's in the world of dreams. I mean, I, I think that's right. I don't, I don't think he's like confused about where he's at. Yeah, no, this is, uh, he's, he's, uh, decided with Moraine to, um, Mm -hmm. go and visit Lanfear to try to work, to basically try to manipulate her, play her. Uh, right. You know, like we talked about last last time, Landfear's motivation, her motivating factor is Rand. You know, and so Rand's like, "How about you know, I just give her a little bit of myself, and maybe we can, uh, you know, kind of change the outcome of what's happening because right now they're being hunted, and uh, mm. he's got to find a way to save Moraine and himself." Yeah, and that's what he's, and she's like totally ready for him. Uh, oh yeah, she is. In multiple ways. I mean the the lip bite. I don't even I don't even know if that was in the script. If it if it was, cool. I don't think it was. I think that was just her natural reaction no, was, to to joke. It was a uh, put there for you. Clearly, clearly. Your pleasure. Yeah, just so I could pause it, this multi-million dollar production, so I could pause it at that moment. Um, But, like, she pretty much convinces him. They, like, come up... um, Basically, Rand agrees to, like, ditch Moraine completely. And I I don't remember exactly what... I think I feel like Lanfear like made that a condition. Yeah, so they both had to give signs of good faith. And Lanfear's condition for Rand was that he needs to leave Moraine. Um and Rand's condition for her was that she needs to show him that she's beneficial to him. And so this is when she shows him Egwene. She takes him to go visit Egwene. Oh yeah, that's right. Um, and and you could tell Lanfear is playing with him while she's while she's doing this in the background. Yeah, I'm looking at the I'm looking at the slides to see. I think I could have sworn I had a slide with with. Uh, Lanfear and Rand with Egwene. That must have been in the other slides. That was dumb of me. Uh, but yeah, you're right. That's like the good faith. Like she she took him to go took him to go see Egwene. You're right. I don't I don't know how I forgot that. But she wait she wakes up. Or he wakes up and then basically tells Moraine, "Sorry, bro, I gotta go." Yeah, I'm gonna go. Uh, I'm gonna go pick some milk up. I'll be back. <laughs> Just grabbing a pack of smokes. I'll be right back. Um, I don't think she's buying it either. No. No, definitely not. She knows something's wrong, but, uh, you know, obviously she doesn't know what, what the play is here, but she knows that Lanfear is trying to separate them, them two from each other. Right. Um, this is I'm trying to remember exactly where in the timeline this is. Uh, I think like pretty early on like right at the beginning of the episode because he goes to sleep and that's the end of one episode and he wakes up in the beginning of the next right so he still he still gets um, 
like captured and held. Right? Isn't that what happens in this episode? Like he's trying to leave. No, that's a that's a bit later on, because uh, like he goes and he finds Matt in this episode. Okay. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. And then and then him and Matt are supposed to leave together, and Moraine starts hunting for him, and Moraine goes to her sister to try to find Rand, and then that's where a lot of kind of stuff gets messy. Um, right, and then I think my last slide says land, land confrontation. Yeah, so I think what you're talking about happens in the next episode because I, I have a note here because uh, I believe in this episode, or, or maybe it was the end of the last one, land tells Suwon basically what's going on, that Moraine's found the dragon, uh, and at the end of this episode, I have a note that uh, Suwon shows up like, w what's wrong, baby girl? When oh. ma Mama's here to save the day. So uh, after she talks to Moraine, they, they find everything out. And then Moraine has her, or Suwon has her, her dealings with Rand. And then that's when they lock him up. Right. Okay. That, that makes sense. I was having a hard time, like, because of the way I save these. I can't always like place exactly what event is happening where. So Rand falls asleep. Lanfear convinces him to leave. And then Rand bumps into Matt. And then for some reason they they got delayed enough that the Omerlin came into town and basically caught him. Correct. I think, I think is how that worked. Okay. Just making sure. Um, I think uh, Rand goes back to sleep after talking to Moraine. Is that is that right? Because I've got him. Well, I've got him in a dream. This no. So he didn't go back to sleep. He left, and I think he's traveling. And you know, he hasn't slept much lately. So you know, he's resting as he's traveling, and. Uh, Biazamon shows up in his dream. And then Lanfear shows up and she like snaps her fingers and he's gone. Like turns him into dust or something. Something like that. Um, and she's like Okay. Trying to show him, you know, some small signs of good faith. Like I keep I keep him at bay for you. Right. I just I couldn't remember if he was like sleeping outside of Kyrian or if he had already like left wherever wherever they happen to be i don't even remember what town they're in when all this happens i, I feel like it's in kyrian so yeah i don't know where they ran to they they went to some inn right where they could get like a private room okay well rand uh does end up asleep again wakes up Wakes up and sees uh, Matt dead with like a dagger slash through his eye. And then, like you said, Shamael shows up. And uh, this guy, I really like him. He's such a good actor. He's nice and nice. Yeah, and he creepy. plays his part very well. Nice and creepy. And then, like you said, uh, Lanfear comes to the rescue and kicks him out. Whether that's whether that's real or planned is uh, up for discussion because I don't think we see a scene where Lanfear and Ishamel are fighting about that she kicked him out. Hundred uh, percent planned. Yeah, I would I would assume so. Um, and then when I was watching at this scene right here. At this scene right here, I completely stopped thinking about the show. And all I could think about was how much the actress playing Lanfear looked like a villain from the original Superman movies. The way she walks, the way her face is structured, the way her hair is styled, what she's wearing, all of it. 
I stopped thinking about Wheel of Time completely and went straight to Superman villain, which is this lady. It's a really wow! What a pull, dog. Like from the short hair to the tight black outfit to the nonchalant way of being a badass. Uh, this is uh, Sarah Douglas, for the record. Uh, I wanted to get a clip. I just I didn't didn't have enough time, and uh, kept getting sidetracked with all my other super productive things that I do with my time. But I did get the picture. Is there? I mean, do you see it, or am I a complete psychopath? No, I see it. I see it. Okay. Well, anyways, after I found the picture, I went back to watching. But uh, like I got completely derailed in my my uh, watch through when I saw her in that getup in the world of dreams. Fair enough. Uh, oh, this is where this is what I was. This is what you were talking about, where they visit, um, where they visit Egwene. So this hap this happens after they make the deal about good faith or whatever and after Rand yeah cause he has to leave Moraine first before she okay alright that's what I was that's what I was trying to figure out it's not really that important I just like to try to keep it in my head in order um and I have no idea why she made this face I think um I just think she looks evil in this scene. trying to get my bearings on this because I, I know Moraine is like writing a letter or something and Barthanis is trying to be like sneaky like brings her a sandwich or something yeah I think uh, she's she's writing her letter to Suwon mm -hmm. um, trying to come up with the words to tell her about everything that's happened you know her being stilled and finding the dragon meanwhile her family's trying to barge in Right. Uh, and then Moraine cries like a little baby. Writing her writing her love letter. Yeah, she is uh very fickle. Yeah. Um And then we get like a bunch of a bunch of stuff happening back to back with Logan. Like I I know this I know this is kind of feels like it's jumping all over the place. This is actually how it was laid out in the show. Like it feels a lot smoother with screenshots, but I promise this is this is the order that it happened in. Um, because Rand Rand ends up uh, going to visit Logan uh, to ask him like to te to teach teach Rand. And Logan's like, why would I teach you? I learned it all on my own. And uh, I don't remember what what Rand offers him in return, but he basically like coaches Rand and tells him to hold, like hold as much of the power as he can. And he was talking with Rand. Rand was like you know your life's not going to amount to anything because you thought you were the dragon and you're not. Mm. But what you could be is you could be the mentor of who the real dragon is. That is what I give you. That's, yeah, I think that's right. So Rand goes to embrace the source. And, you know, special effects are great. And then Rand uh, powers up and blinds everybody that's watching in a dark room so that was nice yeah 
Um, and then, of course, Loghain has to remind him, if you pull too much, you'll burn yourself out. And then... Um, they they just kind of talk a little bit. I don't I don't know that there's any like serious story building here other than like just trying to show how strong Rand is. I, I don't know if you got anything out of that or if it's just kind of a just a scene. Yeah, no. To me, it's just a scene. There there wasn't a whole lot of big story building. I think in this episode, there's a lot of cool moments. Uh, you know, like I, I really enjoyed this episode, but in terms of like breaking it down to a story building nah. episode, it, it d doesn't really line up. Yeah, I, you know, it was n nothing, nothing. Um, like, since we were getting closer to the end of the series, I've been trying to see if there's anything, like, hinting at what we were going to see in Season 3. And as far as this episode goes, the only real thing that has even, like, caught my interest is probably, um, like, Leandrin's arc that we talked about at the beginning. But, like, mo the rest of this episode is all basically pushing us towards the finale of the season. Uh, like, I don't... I don't really see anything special. Like he had to go talk to Loghain and then he's, uh, then he finds, uh, Matt, Matt, after he visits Loghain, he finds Matt, uh, gambling. <clears throat> this was a nice scene. It, it was nice to see Matt and Rand back together again. Yeah, I think, um, where, where is it at? I don't remember if it was this scene where they hug or right before that, but I just thought it was funny. Like, I think this is the first time in this season where Rand sees Matt. And like they changed actors, so like Rand's look of like who is this guy makes total sense. Um, yeah. just like from a, like a meta, I just thought it was funny. And uh, but you know they're they're good actors. Like this this looks like a genuine gesture of friendship, which made me feel all the warm and fuzzies. Definitely like the actor they got to play Matt this season. I agree. I'm gonna have to hold my hold my opinion for season three. Um, just for reasons. So I'm just gonna I'm just gonna hold on. I'm kind of neutral right now. I kind of agree that season one Matt was not the right choice. Season two, Matt, we'll, we'll see as we go forward. Uh, but for this, this season, I think he did a good job. Um, I think Matt is learning from Rand that they're all in FOM. I think they're discussing where everybody is. And then... Uh, this made me chuckle because this is this is a pretty common banter between the two in the in the books, like book two, book three. They they're uh, ribbing each other quite a bit. After they visit with, uh, after Matt and Rand visit, we hop back over to Moraine and her sister. And her sister basically says that the the Omerlin's here. Uh, 
And then... Rand bumps into Lan, like, at the very end. Oh, yeah. Which, that's not a dude I want to... It's not a dude I really just want to bump into if he's mad at me. He's not mad at Ran. He looks mad. He does look mad. I think. Yeah. I think he's. Uh, I think he's mad that his woman ain't talking to him. You mean his master? I mean, is there a difference? I. I can't answer that question. Uh, so to figure out how Lan got there, speaking of Lan, I've got his little story arc up next. Unless there's something like that you're dying to talk about with uh, what happened with Rand, uh, Lan's little little arc in this episode is is what I have next. No, I'm good to go. Okay. Well, they're they're traveling Alana and the warders and Lan and uh, Lan gets to be a voyeur whether he wants to or not. Gets to hear the three cramp into that tiny tent. Um, I personally would be a lot further away than that, but you know, if he likes to listen, fire's built. It's true. He could have built it somewhere else. Um, so that was a conscious choice. Uh, being kind of a caring about it. But anyway, he he gets up to leave and, uh, you know, says, like, basically it was like an all a big misunderstanding. And uh, then we, we cut over to... Like, right after that, we cut over to the Omerlin. I don't remember exactly why she's traveling. I think maybe she's going to Kyrian for some reason. Uh, but she hears, like, a disturbance outside and immediately does this thing. Cool special effects. We see it a little bit later, I think next episode. And uh, then she opens the door, and you can see all these, like, daggers hanging in the air. <laughs> and... Uh, Lan, Lan is the one waiting. So that's where, that's uh, how he got to Kyrian, where he confronted Rand, um, or at least went to go get him. But I thought the you know special effects are always cool. I like them. I uh, I feel a little bit like some of this was forced, but overall, I think the episode was was really good. Uh, Land's arc specifically felt a little forced, but like overall, I thought the episode was a good one. This is this is the lead up into the last two episodes, which I thought were uh, very entertaining. Absolutely. No, I think they did a really good job setting uh, these last two episodes up with this. Um, like you said, there's not a whole lot of story building in these. It's a lot of putting things in motion. Yeah. Uh, a lot of high leverage situations. Um, and kind of leaving them unfinished. Uh, which right. builds a lot of fun anticipation. Yeah, I actually labeled a couple of these slides plot movement. Like that's literally what the the purpose of some of these scenes were was to like move the move the pieces on the chessboard to get ready for the last two mm -hmm. episodes. I've been off center this whole time. It's kind of annoying. Uh, you have been distracted this whole time. Yeah, I, I uh, you're not wrong. You're not wrong. Getting back into this is uh, exciting, but apparently not in a healthy way. I've been like looking at every screen and like adjusting my seat, not holding still. Uh, a fidgety. A little bit. 
Not not quite tweaking, but feels kind of close to that. Not really sure why. I'm just excited about the Wheel of Time, man. Give me a break. No? All right. No. Moving on. Um... Okay, those last three slides are absolutely unimportant. Uh, it's just uh, Min and Matt and my boy Ashamio. I don't even know what those were for. I think uh, Ashamio is just kind of forcing Min to keep Matt moving. And that's it. That's all I got. I think that's the whole episode. Yeah. Sounds about right. Were there any no any notes that we didn't get to? Um, no. Nah, I mean, I th I think I for this episode I really only had about a page and a half. There wasn't too much on this episode that I thought was a uh, was a lot. I think the next episode is going to be more interesting. I have three pages of notes in comparison for the next episode so dang yep. all right um well i do want to fix my microphone issue before we get into that did you you weren't trying to do that today were you uh, no that wasn't my plan okay I figured we'd do that maybe later this week. Yeah. Yeah, I'm I'm pretty much uh, free all the way up until like Thursday morning. Starting Thursday, I'll be yeah. at work early and then going out of town. Yeah. I think we can uh, at least get the first half of that in because that's probably going to have to be a, a two-part episode. Yeah. Um, I'm that I'm thinking so too. Like I have a feeling the last the last two episodes are gonna be like four streams just to keep us from uh like losing steam halfway through. Yeah. Cause we're at we're at an hour right now and I still feel alright. Yeah. No for sure, but I think if we were to try to break into another half an episode in two hours I'd probably be pretty burned out. Yeah, um, want to avoid that. Yeah. Well, that's that's the plan. If we, uh, I mean, this stream is over. I can I can probably stop it. I thought the discussion was good. I was a little sidetracked, but I mean, we can go ahead and kill it for now. Yeah, that sounds good. Thanks for watching. <laughs>